Well, hey everybody, welcome to Sunday show. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late here. I downloaded all the pictures you guys you guys sent, and I forgot to upload them into the program, so I was frantically doing that with the last uh, couple of seconds here. All right, let's get into the show. First of all, shout out to Canada Drives. .ca. This is where you go to shop for a used car in Canada. You can shop online, you get approved for your credit online, you order the car online, then they deliver it, often the very next day in a covered uh, trailer in the general, uh, the greater Toronto area, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and British Columbia, and expanding to other parts of the country. And then there's carcostcanada.com, that's for new. If you're shopping for a new car, go online, do a search for the car you're looking for and find out basically what the dealer paid for the car. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH, that's the name of the channel. You become an ex expert member and it opens up extra searches for you. All right, what else do we want to talk about? We're going to get to the pictures in just a second. Oh yeah, we were just in Texas this week at the uh, HQ Confidential is the event where they showcased all the new Toyota and Lexus products. One of the big ones was the all-new RX, which is going to be made in Canada alongside the NX. That means 70% of all Lexus products uh, sold in North America are made in Canada at the Cambridge facility. So that's a big deal, the new RX. And a lot of people don't like the front of it. I think, I think it's a great-looking uh, update. It really is. What else is coming up? On uh, a week from yesterday, uh, coming up on Saturday, uh, we shot yesterday the Lucid Air. This is the Grand Touring model. So we're going to have that video dropping on Saturday. Also coming up this week, um, we have our fuel efficiency of the compact luxury SUVs. And also a first look. We've done a lot of these first look videos over the last week because we've had all these new products come out. So we've been kind of focusing on that. The HRV from Honda, which is a big deal. So the HRV is all new for 2023. That's going to be shown here on Tuesday morning, um, and that's uh, and then the uh, CRV will be later in the summer. And then they're going to have a new Honda Pilot. So a whole bunch of new stuff coming from Honda, which is great. Um, so what other vehicles did we have? We did quick videos on the uh, RX. The Corolla Cross, which is all new for 2020, uh, Corolla Cross Hybrid, which is new for 2023, and the Corolla um, basically is getting an update with more hybrid models and that e all-wheel drive system. So that's what's coming up. All right, let's get into the pictures. The first picture is from, this one is from John. This is his 04 Matrix, almost 20 years old. And it has 260,000 kilometers on the clock. And he always laughs when he takes uh, young people in the car because they don't know how to roll down the windows. They're manual windows. <laughs> I, I had an old Volkswagen van and our, my, our kids used to love to get in them and wind the windows down. They thought that was really cool. And those little triangle windows that you had in the old vans and cars, that you love those as well. All right, next up, our next picture. This is a beauty. I think this one steals the show just because of the color. This is from Michael, who sent a picture of a 73 Corvette, the C3. And this is uh, a neighbor of his car. And that's just beautiful. Love the color. Great picture. All right, uh, next one is from New Zealand. This is a picture not of Carl, but from Carl. Um, he has just picked up his Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross PHEV. Congratulations. We do not get that car. We get the Eclipse Cross. We don't get the PHEV version, so good for you, especially with the price of fuel these days. Uh, the next one is from uh, Tony. Sent picture collage in of his trip to California. Saw um, an original faded paint red 65 Mustang Coupe and also the new Rivian. Yeah, you see lots of cool cars when you're in California. Uh, next picture goes to... This is Lauren sent a picture in of his Tucson PHEV. That's like the rare spotted owl getting that. Um, exactly the same model that my mother-in-law got. She got the white one. I like it in the gray. Our next picture comes from, this is from Maxim, who um, on out with the old and in with the new. Can you spot the difference? He wanted to get a manual transmission Volkswagen Jetta and the dealers uh, told him that 
they are not available with a manual transmission. And um, and he got in touch with Andrea through Instagram, and we got it confirmed that yes, the Jetta is being produced with a manual transmission. That's what he ordered, and they actually they found one at a dealership. He lives in the Ottawa area, and he went down to Toronto, drove down, picked the car up. So there you go, out with the old, in with the new. So we got the new updated Jetta with a manual transmission. So don't believe everything dealers tell you. Sometimes they just want to sell you what's on their lot. That's exactly what they want to do. Uh, this is a beauty. This is from Randy, an 08 Audi TT. Doesn't that car look clean? It's a 3.2 Quattro with 186,000 kilometers on the clock. And he said uh, he's had zero issues with it, uh, just regular maintenance. And uh, I hear this all the time. People say, oh, don't buy this brand or that brand. They're absolute crap. And that's just not true. We had an Audi for four years. We never had a stitch of trouble with it. So um, yeah, there you go. And here's a last picture from Mac. He got a 2021 Chevrolet Bolt, okay? And then they updated the model for 2022. That's that's the one you're looking at there. So here's here's the story. He believes that General Motors did the right thing. Because his vehicle was a 2021, it would have been the one of the very last ones to get the updated battery pack. So he's in Virginia. General Motors came to him and said, listen, we'll flip you out of the 2021 and into a brand new 2022. Your lease stays the same. And they carved him a check for the difference. This is the big news this week, if you ask me. I know, you know, the Toyota Lexus headquarters things, that was a lot of fun. But I think one of the biggest stories of the week is General Motors dropping the price of the Chevy Bolt by $6,300. So uh, Mac is getting a check from uh, General Motors for the difference. Plus, he gets a brand new car with a new battery and all the latest tech. So good for you. That's a score. So the Bolt in the United States um, currently is $31,500. And for the 2023 model year, and they're going to switch to 2023 production within probably the next few weeks, it drops down to $25,600. That's an amazing deal for a car that gets um, 250 miles of range or 400 plus kilometers of range. In my opinion, I've been saying this for years. The Bolt is the best electric car on the market for the price. Nothing can touch it. 400 plus kilometers or 250 miles of range, it's now $25,600. Are you kidding me? That's a screaming deal. Now, um, big part of that is because the rebate is gone in the U.S. for General Motors. Here in Canada, uh, we still have a rebate in place for the federal government. We haven't heard if General Motors Canada is going to follow suit with the price reduction. Let's hope so, but uh, there you go. All right. Anything else I want to talk about? Oh, a couple of other uh, pieces of information. Uh, not Tesla, but General Motors, again, uh, beat Tesla to the market with a full autonomous EV permit for California. They are going to have a fleet of vehicles, um, fully autonomous, that are going to be able to move people around, and they've now been given uh, the green light to do that in California. Also, <clears throat> some Canadian content here, Windsor, Windsor Production, which is where they make the Pacifica and Pacifica Hybrid currently, is going to be a future EV production center for large platform EVs. So think of three row SUVs and maybe a minivan. So that's good news for the Windsor, Ontario area. And the Brampton Assembly, where they make the Chrysler 300 currently, is going to be switching to an EV platform as well. All right. Enough of me prattling on. Let's get to your questions. By the way, if anybody wants to do a super chat, we're more than open to that. It's just not really like I am had my hand out looking for money. It's just that it flags it for me and I can see it. And um, that's just a, a quicker way of getting to the question. If you just have to have to get a question answered. And our first one comes from our pal Jerome in Quebec. Subscriber sip. Cheers. I don't have any beer here, but I have my water. A beer would be a good idea, but Jack, my oldest, is um, he's got a cool job. Check this out. <clears throat> Our oldest Jack is now 19. In the middle of the city of Vancouver, a lot of people wouldn't know this if you're not from here, but right in the center of Vancouver, there's an old school baseball diamond. 
where the Vancouver Canadians play. It's a um, single A baseball team. It used to be triple A and be affiliated with the Oakland A's. Now it's single A and affiliated with the Blue Jays. And this ballpark, um, it's called Nat Bailey Stadium, the greatest little ballpark in baseball. I think everybody, every ballpark calls himself that. Um, they play a full season here, 80 games, and he's working as a bartender and he's liking it because he makes great tips. How good a job is that? You get to work at the ballpark, they're playing baseball, you sell some beers, and you make some good money. So that's where he is. All right, let's get into the questions. Uh, Jerome, thank you for that. All right, to the top we go. <clears throat> Sinjab here. Any plan to review the 2022 Cadillac XT4 Premium Luxury soon? There is a review that we did last year of the X-T4. The only difference between the luxury one and the one we drove is the trim. The one we had is sport. It gets different wheels, different trim on the outside, <coughs> but essentially it's the same product. So all of the characteristics of um, the X-T4 are intact. So I encourage you to go and watch that video. Uh, we're a big fan of the X-T4 here on the channel. We chose it actually as one of our favorite, our top five um, luxury compact or subcompact SUVs. It's a really good product. So um, check it out on the site. It is there. Webb, uh, for the new Honda Civic 1.5 Turbo, are there any mechanical differences between the sedan and the hatchback? Do they ride about the same? No, you wouldn't notice any difference, no. It's really all just a packaging exercise. Um, there might be slight differences, maybe a little bit louder with the hatchback due to not having a trunk and keeping some of that noise in the trunk. But no, I wouldn't I wouldn't say there's be any difference. When you get up into the sportier versions, I'm not trying to remember now, this is off the top of my head. Um, like when you get into the SI and some of the other trims, there is a, a, a sports setting that changes the dampers on the model, but you'd have to check and see what trim that's on. On a scale of zero to Stefan Diggs, how would you rate Toyota's genius to offer an all-wheel drive Corolla option? Well, we were at the uh, Toyota uh, headquarter confidential thing that they had in Texas this week. And it's just amazing to see the giant taking some giant steps forward. So Toyota, depends on the month is the largest car company in the world. Volkswagen Group battles with them. Uh, General Motors used to, but they don't any longer. They're not fighting to be the biggest in the world. They're fighting to get more relevance in the marketplace. But Toyota is just astronomically large. And they made a lot of announcements and their push for electrification uh, and what they mean by electrification, it's hybrids and plugins. And what they shared with us, some stuff I'm not allowed to tell you, um, it's just a big company that is not lifting off. They are pushing down and uh, they just have so much engineering might behind them to produce vehicles at scale across the planet. It's just impressive to see. And yeah, so Toyota might not be everybody's cup of tea when it comes to styling, especially, or, you know, um, features, but boy, they know how to put cars together. And I think it's absolutely genius that they came with a Corolla. So what do you need to do to keep cars relevant in comparison to SUVs? You need to add more features. The interesting thing is that what we've seen in the last three or four months is people are refinding sedans again. Small sedans like the Civic, like the Corolla, like the Elantra, like the Forte 5. Sales are starting to creep up again because people are looking for a way to save fuel. And these, even with the gas models, are already incredibly efficient. Then you add in the Corolla hybrid. Then you add in more hybrid models in the Corolla lineup. And then you add in the option for uh, e all-wheel drive. We don't have the pricing on it yet. It'll be coming as the new model comes in the fall. But yeah, it's a big deal. Any further updates on Hyundai Kia back uh, blockade of wireless car plan top trims? At some point, doesn't the lack of the feature start hurting them competitively? Thanks for your work. Yeah, they, they have an issue with the larger head units that <clears throat> they want to have proprietary map loading for their onboard navigation. Google and Apple want it to be theirs. They come to uh, loggerheads. Um, 
the question we've been asking is it reverse compatible so when they do sorry my seat cushion here so when they do actually get around to including that is it going to be able to be installed after the fact of the car that maybe you just bought uh, we've not been able to get an answer on that and I think that you know is one feature of being wireless going to be a deal breaker for somebody if they really really like the car uh, I wouldn't get too hung up on it. I mean, you're going to have a cable in the middle of the dash. You're going to plug your phone in. The nice thing is it charges while it's connected to the car. Yeah, it's not as convenient as, as leaving it in your bag or your purse or in your pocket. But listen, it's not the end of the world. And after you're used to getting in the car and plugging in your phone, it does become second nature. <coughs> uh, here's Danny with a super chat. Do you believe the Toyota Hilux will ever be available in the U.S.? Are they available for sale in Canada? No, Hilux not sold here. The, the um, Tacoma truck that we get here is actually, for the most part, not entirely, but for the most part, engineered in North America for a North American audience. <coughs> now, you have to think about Toyota's commitment to in, including electrification to their entire lineup by 2025. So the cars we got to see in uh, Texas were 2023 models. That means we're just two model years away from their promise to deliver either a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, or a battery, battery electric vehicle in every model line that they have. So that would include Tacoma. That would include uh, other vehicles, like you, you've seen with the new um, Sequoia, that it's, it's a hybrid only. So the good news is to Toyota is going to be coming with an updated Tacoma and it's going to be at the bare minimum, it's going to be um, a hybrid. Could it be a full EV? I'm not sure they're going to go all the way there. It could be a plug-in, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. Now, I'm going to speculate a little bit. So this RX, okay, this is the high-performance RX 500. This has now with the hybrid system, a, okay, it's got a turbo four-cylinder. It's got an electrified system. That's the hybrid system. It's got a new e-axle at the back. Um, it didn't exactly explain how it works, but it's a new sort of direct drive electric motor at the back using power from the battery. But the biggest thing is this has now a six-speed automatic transmission. So no CVT. CVT has gone. That's going to have a high performance, higher output, version of their hybrid system with a six-speed automatic transmission and they the chief engineer was there and he said they wanted to have more direct feel more punch more direct feel no lag like you can get with a cvt and i started doing the math 2.4 turbo hybrid um automatic transmission with the special differential in the back couldn't you just plug that into a tacoma wouldn't that make sense to have a automatic transmission pickup truck with that that drivetrain I don't know sounds like sounds plausible to me we'll have to wait and see <clears throat> here's Jean bonsoir 45,000 budget for a fun sporty reliable enough used car no SUV to drive 12 months a year for a couple 60 years old who love cars long-term value also while waiting for improved ev availability okay i would suggest so you want to use car and if you want reliability and it's still a fun to car to drive maybe not the most dynamic but you know you're saying you're in uh, over 60 you also want some comfort and luxury i'm guessing honestly a lexus is 350 a used Lexus IS 350 is going to deliver a comfortable, luxurious ride. It has enough power. It is got. It does have great handling, and uh, is bulletproof. It's just bulletproof, and you could drive it for a few years, and then when you find something newer, maybe a hybrid or a plug-in or something like that. So, and the, the number one thing for me is that you know it's comfortable. And it's very, very reliable and available with all-wheel drive if that's your thing. So under $45,000, I'm not sure what year you would be looking at, but that's somewhere to shop. So those, that's, a, that's probably um, fun, sporty, and reliable enough. 
Another one I'm, I'm a big fan of is the uh, Audi uh, A5. That's also a nice car. Very compliant, easy to drive, easy on the body, not too, not too hard to drive, and uh, I've always enjoyed driving those. Okay, so there's a couple to try. Come back. If you don't like them, <laughs> we'll start again. Okay, where are we again? Uh, here's Jerome again. Um, you feel small cars will get their mojo back with the actual gas prices. They're not coming down uh, anytime. No, gas prices aren't coming down anytime soon. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw the big headline from Jamie Dimon. Um, he's the, I think it's, uh, what, is it Citibank? It's one of the big banks in the U.S. He says there's a economic hurricane just about to hit. Now, he's an international banker. It would be interesting to see if that's true. There's all kinds of speculation. Fuel prices are going to shoot up this fall. As we head into the winter, Europe has made noises that they're not going to be using any uh, Russian gas and oil. I'm not sure how they can do that entirely. But uh, it could be really ugly when it comes to oil prices. But yeah, Jerome's right. I mentioned it a moment ago. People are reimagining and finding again that small cars are really good on gas. They're fun to drive and they work for most people. Here's JD. Saw a Maverick on the road today for the first time. Great looking truck. We have in the computer our Maverick review. We've had lots of other things coming out. It's it's in there. It's not edited, but um, all I can tell you is this is <laughs> you know, this is how it went. Um, Andrea, I love this truck. She says I like it too. Sent an email to Ford. Can we buy this truck? <laughs> That's how much we liked it. We I, I would I'd love to have one. I think the Maverick's fantastic, and I just want the I just want the hybrid. I want the four-cylinder hybrid, front-wheel drive, and it gets incredible fuel economy. I think the Maverick's great. Hey Zach, do you know when the new Sequoia available in Canada? Also, any pricing available yet? Um, they're going to be arriving soon. I don't know exactly. I think it's this summer. So yeah, um, they're going to have them arriving in the press fleet they're not doing an event in canada um i should i should have asked that we were so busy doing other stuff yeah but very soon great looking truck by the way here's another super chat from hugo do you think corolla cross hybrid all-wheel drive is worth compared to rav4 hybrid price difference is really small well i don't know why you say the price difference is really small because the price has not been announced yet so um yeah that could just be speculation the price has not been announced for the 2023 all they did was show the vehicle but they didn't give any price they might have given prices in the u.s but they didn't give any prices here um so yeah i, I don't know if i was to buy a corolla cross it would be a no-brainer i would get the hybrid the, the only knock that I had against the Corolla Cross was the fact that it was noisy, especially on the highway. So Toyota seems to have a really good job when they bring out their hybrid models of making them quieter. So that would definitely alleviate it. And it's going to bring in some good power, just under 200 horsepower. Not bad for a small crossover. But yeah, it's going to be cheaper than the RAV4. It has to be because it's a smaller vehicle. How much? We'll have to wait and see. Oh, here's Charlottetown Spud. Good to see you again, brother. Great handle. Curious you if you had a chance to drive the Integra. I've been looking at some late model 3 series, but I'm a little worried about BMW reliability. Wonder if the Integra would be a good option. Uh, I haven't driven it yet. There was a, a very small program um, for the Canadian journalist. I think they only took six people down to drive the Integra. So hopefully we'll get it soon. Um, I would just buy a Civic Si. That's what I would buy. You know, I think it's just a, a better all-round deal. Um, and BMW reliability is one of those things. It all comes down to maintenance. Who's had the car? How diligent have they been? And, you know, you can have a car that just works and you have no issues with it. Then you can have another car and it hasn't been great. And as we saw in our pictures somebody just sent a picture in of their 08 audi tt with almost 200,000 kilometers on it and have had no issues with it but it's been regularly maintained so when you're buying a used car you're buying the previous owner's dedication to getting the maintenance done so 
I wouldn't be afraid of buying um, a BMW. And I would also just go in there knowing, hey, it's going to cost me a little bit more, maybe in maintenance or a, maybe a repair here and there. But that's part of the cost of having a, a car that you really like. I'm, I'm not always too concerned about maintenance, uh, not maintenance, but reliability for me is so I'll put up with a few repairs here and there. But uh, if it's if it's sort of nonstop, then it's time to move the car on. But, you know, a few things once in a while, it doesn't bother me. Another super chat from Mark Gagnon. Uh, I was at the Honda dealer. They told me they don't have orders anymore for the Accord Hybrid this year. True, or he wanted to sell me something else. I have heard uh, stories that what I would, what I, I bet you what he's saying to you is that 2022 allocation has been fulfilled. That's probably what he's saying. Now, when he says this year, what he really means is this model year. So you've got to remember that 2023 production for most brands, especially if it's a domestically made product and the Accord is, switches right around September. Okay, so if you like the Accord Hybrid and we really liked it when we drove it, is order a 2023 model. Doesn't mean it's going to come in 2023. It just means the next model year. So that's what I would do is work with them and see what they say about when the model year switches over. It's probably um, August or September. We have almost 400 people on board and 91 thumbs up. Um, so if you guys could smash the thumbs up, it really helps um, get this shared after the fact, which is really, really good. So thanks to everybody that shows up here. Last week was a long weekend for the U.S. and the week before was a long weekend for Canadians. So now we're back to regular Sunday. Okay. I just re oh, I hit that button again. I just recently ordered a 2022 Gas Outlander. I got the SE, and my friend Nick got the GT Premium, which was which has me rethinking my choice. Which trim for the Outlander 2022 model do you recommend, John? Hey, listen, John. Um, the Outlander is a really slippery vehicle. They have a very very wide spectrum of trim choices. I think they have seven or eight. So for me to tell you, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head to begin with. What I would do, this is what I would do because we actually, Andrea actually went through this exercise um, in the video. So watch our Outlander video. It was from about a year and a half ago when the vehicle first came out, but it's still the current same model. And she actually mentioned what she believes is the best value trim. So go back and watch the video. We did mention it in the video, but when you see the video, there's so many trims that are covered, um, but that's my best advice. <laughs> Julie, do you ever take a day off of work? Thanks for the amazing reviews. Not really, we work pretty much seven days a week. Some days we work less than others. Today's super busy. Um, we got back from Texas uh friday was uh we did some i did some editing and stuff yesterday we spent the whole day shooting the lucid air we only had the car for one day so we had to shoot the entire thing and host the video our on-camera stuff usually we break that up over a couple of days but we did it back to back to back and we got lucky with the weather it worked out great and today i'm editing that we're going away again this week on Tuesday to Friday with Subaru for the WRX in Kingston, Ontario. So we got to get all this stuff front loaded. It's interesting. Andrew and I even joked about that, you know, when we go away on these press trips, it's actually more relaxing than being at home because we have to get everything done before we go away. So when we actually get on the plane, it's it feels like a bit of a break. So we're looking forward to having um, four days where we only have to really shoot the car on one day. Hey, Zach, a GV60 review coming soon. Yes, we don't have it like in the next couple of weeks, but we are going to get the vehicle by the end of the month. Okay, so just stay tuned for that. Any hints about a new 4Runner or Tacoma? They didn't show us anything about those trucks. They're tight-lipped on that. 
they did show us um so it's called hq confidential so they shared a lot of stuff and it's all public and loads of videos on what was shown this week they did unveil a couple of vehicles for us in a in a, a secret room they showed us the products they took our phones and they put them in sealed pouches and they swore us to secrecy they showed us the vehicles and we are not even allowed to talk about them all i can tell you is there there were two vehicles that they showed us and um neither one of them was the forerunner or the tacoma okay i can confirm that so we did get information from toyota canada saying there's something that they haven't announced or they didn't share with us that's going to be coming this year that's a bit of a surprise i don't know what that is but that's all you get out of toyota it's the one company i will tell you that is the most locked down when it comes to product information nobody really knows the information until they're ready to share it with us and they're very good at it so apparently there's going to be a little nugget coming between now and the end of the year mb10 hey zach the channel is amazing great content very informative thank you very much thanks for being here kpkp so i went to my local vw dealer to finalize the purchase of the gti deal fell through because of the mandatory etching fees this was after on the road final negotiated price unhappy okay kp uh the etching thing is absolute bs it doesn't exist if the dealer says that you have to pay okay I'll, for, I'll explain what it is so you go to the dealer and they say oh we put in etching so on the glass they'll etch in like a special number and they say this is to track the vehicle if the vehicle's ever stolen they've etched in a special number and they put it on the glass it is absolutely bs the dealer cannot charge you for that and if you haven't agreed to it what i would do is i'm not sure where you are but I would contact um, the manufacturer, first of all. So if you're in Canada, contact uh, Volkswagen Canada, customer number, open a file with them. If you're in the US, do the same thing. Also contact your sales authority. So depending on what province or state you're in, there will be a sort of an ombudsman or somebody that does relations between dealers. And if the dealer is not supposed to charge you for that, it is absolutely a made up thing. It doesn't exist. All they're trying to do is to add to the cost of the vehicle and put money in their pocket, $500, $1,000, whatever nonsense number they come up with. See, this is what drives me crazy. Car dealers have the worst reputation in business as being the sleaziest of them all. And they have that for good reason, because they do sleazy crap, like tell you you need to have etching on the windows, uh, for them to sell you the car. It is nothing but an upsell, and they know that if you don't buy the GTI, there's 10 guys behind you that will. So contact your sales authority, your dealer, um, regulatory body, wherever you are. Also contact the manufacturer, tell them the name of the dealer, tell them the name of the salesperson and the general manager, and tell them it's offside. It is not allowed. It's just a made up thing. They're trying to get your money. It pisses me off when I hear about this stuff. I would love to go in with you and say, what the hell is this? This is nonsense. So you have a contract with them. So let me just get this, get this right. This was after the on-road final negotiated price. Do you have the actual um, um, agreement? the sales receipt saying what you are going to buy the car for do you have anything in writing so keep that and and uh you know what i would storm back in just the way i am i'd go back in there and speak to the general manager and say this is what we agreed to uh you're trying to pull a fast one i am not happy about it call your local tv station they, might, they always like a good story <clears throat> i feel better now hopefully you get some answers Put an order on, an, uh, on a 2023 Sportage Hybrid because of your video. Nice. You're going to like it. Very impressive vehicle. Uh, Reinhardt, did you hear about the huge discount on the Chevy Bolts? Yes, I did. 6300 bucks. Huge. When we did our... <laughs> timing's everything, right? So last summer, a year ago, 
we did our video on the 2022 Chevy Bolt, or the updated, the new, the updated newer model. And in the video, I said, shots fired. Because you got to remember, these are in US dollars now. In Canada, the numbers were bigger. Chevy, for the 2022 model year, dropped the price by $5,000. Okay? Then they had to shut down production because of fires. And now they're ramping up production again. And now they dropped the price $6,300. So in 18 months, Chevrolet has dropped the price of the Bolt <clears throat> by $11,300. That's huge. So that means you can get a Chevy Bolt for $25,000 US. Hello, I'll take two. Good for them. Good for them. Well done. I love it. I love it. All these other bozos are putting the prices up of their electric cars. All right. Here's Dave Reimer. Hey, Dave, nice to see you. Thanks for being here and thanks for the super chat. Zach, hope you are well. Could you get in touch with your contacts at Kia to see the latest on an announcement of a Sportage PHEV? Still waiting for pricing, packaging, availability announcement. All you need to do, Dave, is wait. <laughs> it's coming. They are going to have it. So what they did was they introduced the gas and the hybrid. It's out now. And the PHEV will be coming. I would suspect it's going to be here for the fall. So, yeah, they will announce the pricing closer to the date. There's nothing they're going to tell me other than that. So I could, I could email them, but they're going to say it's coming. So my advice to you is if you really want a Sportage or Sportage, if you're American, PHEV, work with your local dealer order one and when it comes in and when the pricing is finalized then do the paperwork and get it so it is coming it is coming <clears throat> here's james love my cx30 feel a tech downgrade to a, a gr corolla may be worth the sacrifice a tech downgrade i don't know how you say it's a downgrade holy smokes man <laughs> the gr corolla with all that power all-wheel drive i don't know that's quite the car Here's Jerome again. Speaking of dealer BS, a dealer in my neighborhood bought 100 kilometers on a Wrangler so they could sell it as used and, and bump the price. That's been going on for a long time. <clears throat> and the worst offender, from what I hear, <coughs> excuse me, this is anecdotally, were Chrysler dealers. Uh, here's Dave again. I have deposit down, but still waiting eagerly. Well, Dave, you just got to wait. It's like waiting for your birthday or waiting for Santa Claus or Hanukkah or whatever it is that you wait for. You just got to wait. Opening that present, getting the email from your Kia dealer, your car, you can order it. It's going to be exciting. You know, there's the old saying, the chase is better than the catch. If you're a, a motor a motorhead fan. Um it's like when I bought my first uh, 911, my air-cooled 911. You know, owning the car is cool. Getting the car and driving it, that's fun. The hunting for the car, the looking everywhere, scouring the classifieds, flying over in a helicopter to Victoria, going to the dealership, signing the paperwork, that was the fun part. Owning the car was great, but the chase, in fact, was better than the catch. <clears throat> Hey Zach, most of the current Ford hybrids have very are very similar to Toyota specs, including engine volume and consumption. Seems like Toyota make or Ford to use hybrid components. Can you comment? No, they are they are not connected in any way. It just happens that uh, they have a similar displacement, two and a half liter four cylinder engine, for example. Um, no, it's, it's the same, you know, they basically just went and saw what Toyota's doing and said, we'll try that too. There's no shared components. A lot of people think that. It's not true. <clears throat> and the Ford hybrids are very good. So the Maverick that we had a couple of weeks ago or a week ago, it's supposed to get, I think, six, uh, 5.6 liters per 100 kilometers uh, combined. And we were getting better than that. So that's, I don't know what that is in miles per gallon, but put it this way, we were getting better than the posted fuel economy. And I thought that truck was fantastic. I, I you know, I just, I think it's great. I think the Maverick is great. They're gonna sell every one they can make. It's fantastic. 
All right, we got four, almost 450 people on board and 181 thumbs up. If you guys could smash it, that would be definitely great. I'm still pissed about that etching in the glass. I mean, these guys are so stupid. Okay, so here's somebody who wants to go and buy a GTI. Fantastic car. That's another car I want. I want a new Maverick. I want a new GTI. <laughs> I want a bunch of stuff. Um, so it's a great car. Can, okay, so this person is getting... Um, is getting pissed off by this dealership. The the word of mouth that he's going to spread to all of his friends and family wherever he lives, whatever town that is, it's just terrible. You know, go on Google and write a review of the dealership telling them just how what crap they're trying to pull off here. I mean, these people are so thick sometimes. It's just sleazy car dealership nonsense and they you know what? They got to get called out on it. As somebody from a car company told me, you know, we want you to make a million dollars. We just don't want you to make a million dollars on every car. Like, come on. And the other thing is, with the way the economy is and the lack of supply, there's no discounting. You're not going into Volkswagen and saying, well, I, I might buy the GTI, but... uh I don't know if you guys could work on the price. None of that's happening. They just say, here's the car. And by the way, we're going to be sleazy and try and get even more money out of you. Idiots. All right, where was I? Ah, I'm going to get my blood pressure down. All right. Um, uh, here we go. I found where I was. Hey, Zach, I'm thinking of purchasing a 2022 WRX with a CVT. What are your thoughts? So I'm trying to, I'm, now this I don't know. You might be able to answer me this. So we're going to go and drive the WRX this week. Is it a 2022 or a 2023? So what I don't know from your question is, is it the current model or the new model? If I was, I'll just give you the answer that I, I would go for the new model. The old WRX was old. Like when you drove it, it really felt quite primitive. The interesting thing is that the CVT you would think performance sedan, all-wheel drive, turbocharged CVT, that can't add up to be any fun. Well, here's the newsflash. It is actually fun. And Subaru has done a really good job. They realized there was a whole generation of young people who are like performance cars that don't drive stick. So give them, uh, but they didn't come up with a dual clutch or anything like that. They went and they got a high torque high performance CVT and you would think that it can't it's got to drive like crap it can't be any good it's actually pretty good so the new one we've done the research before we go um, has uh, an improved a version of the old CVT with mimic shifts that's what they do they mimic shifts it goes to sort of preset points so even when you're driving it that it is a CVT it does kind of give you the impression that it's changing gears and they did a good job with it so if you don't drive stick then you can get the CVT and uh, have at it I believe so I don't know is the one we're driving a 2022 or 2023 I don't know Uh, hey, Zach, hope you had a good time in Texas. Do you know any pricing yet on the new RX? Also, any updates on the new CRV? Okay, so what they did in Texas is they showed the products. No pricing. So if anybody's telling you they know the pricing, I just, there is none available. So this is going to be coming for the next model year. As they get closer, um, they're going to announce the pricing and the trims. So all we were told was there's a regular gas, there's a regular hybrid, there's a plug-in hybrid, and then the high-performance hybrid. That's basically all they told us with the specifications. But what they didn't tell us, the pricing and all the individual trims in there. So yeah, stay tuned. Also, CRV is going to be, I did get an email back from Honda Canada uh, asking them about when are we going to get a chance to drive the new CRV, and he said the end of summer, beginning of uh, fall. So that means probably September. Hi, Zach. I'll be moving to Vancouver from Brisbane, Australia. Oh, boy. Are you sure? I'm interested in a new Corolla Cross Hybrid. Do you think the fuel economy is really lower than the RAV4 Hybrid, as you stated? I think I did make a little bit of a mistake in that video. Um, 
official numbers are the RAV4 actually does get better fuel economy. But I would suspect that, you know, there's the real economy and then there's the posted economy. Um, but the thing is, it'll be cheaper. So it really comes down to what you really need in a car. But back to the real question is, you're moving from a sunny, warm part of the world to a rainy part of the world. It, the spring here in Vancouver has been absolute crap. It's been cool. It's been soggy. It rained this morning like nobody's business. I was wearing a fleece this morning walking the dog. It's just been crap. So we're waiting for summer. And I've been to Australia, and it's nice there. So anyway, welcome to Canada. And um, we'll have to get our hands on the Corolla Cross Hybrid to actually drive it and see what it's like. So all I can tell you is that they're going to be close, but the, but the Corolla Cross will be less expensive. Okay, just want to make sure I didn't lose a super chat here. Bud the Spud, or Charlottetown Spud. Um, Dave... We did that one. We got lots of questions today. Thanks, you guys, for being here. I wonder if we can get to 500 people on. That would be a first. Five. Uh, our highest is right around this, 465 people on board. So maybe we could get to uh, get to 500. That'd be cool. And these live chats after the fact, they all average right around 10,000 views. So thanks for being here. I just saw Brian T's got a question about our Cayenne. Hey, Zach, I know you love your Cayenne. Thinking about ordering one myself. What do you figure is the lead time nowadays to configure, order, and receive a brand new Cayenne? Oh, that's really a question for the dealer. Um, I, I would suspect that a lot of the allotment is, is going to be hard to get. Um, so they've had a lot of knocks because of the war in Ukraine. A lot of the wiring harnesses were made in Ukraine. Now, the factory, by the way, in Ukraine is still up and running. Can you believe that? Depends on where it is in Ukraine. Um, and then they're also working with other suppliers. So really what I would do is I would talk to the dealer because I could tell you a number and I don't really know the facts. Um, so I know Lewis from Porsche Center Vancouver watches these live shows. Um, I mean, I tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll text Lewis right now. <laughs> I'll text him and see if he replies in the next few minutes. Here's Lewis, okay. I was messaging him about something else. I'm doing the live show and somebody wants to know what the lead time is to get a new Cayenne, question mark. See the answers. There you go. See if Lewis answers. He's a good guy. He lets us drive his own personal um, car when we need a car to drive. I mean, to review. Okay. Let's see if that lights up. I'll know we got a message. Okay, where am I here? You all right? 482 oh we're so close to getting to 500 all right okay while i'm looking here i'm just going to let you know what's coming up again this week so we have the first look at the hrv so on tuesday morning when you get up there will be an hrv first look video so that is going to be the new subcompact crossover it has grown in size but um but there you go so that is a big deal for Honda. And uh, then later in the week, we're going to have our most fuel efficient luxury compact utilities. Um, so there you go. And then uh, the Lucid Air will be uh, next Saturday. And then we're going to get the WRX video edited and out um, the following Wednesday. Okay. Here's Raul. Um, I'm used to direct TPMS systems like Porsche where you can see each tire individual pressure. Your thoughts on the Audi that uses passive indirect system. So from what I understand is some, um, I'm not sure exactly about the Audi system. So they have the tire pressure monitor inside the wheel and it sends a signal and tells you exactly the pressure. A lot of systems are like that. But the more primitive ones on less expensive cars, from what I understand, uses the traction and stability control system to notice a difference in the basically the size of the tire. So the wheel is turning at a different rate uh, in comparison to the opposite wheel. 
So that's how they can tell whether one of the tires is going flat. And then they can tell, because of the electronics, which one is going flat. So um, I think it's great technology. <laughs> I sold a Tacoma pickup uh, a year ago. And the wheels that I had on that never had TPMS in them. And the guy said, I, you know, I had a little thing on the dash said TPMS. And I said, you know what? I don't have TPMS sensors in the wheels. And he says, well, how do you know? I said, old school. I look at them and I check them. So um, I'm not really hung up on that because if you've ever been driving, you've been driving for more than a couple of dozen years. That's how we used to do it not that long ago. Oh my God, look at this. Viewer from Singapore, where the Toyota Corolla costs US dollars $90,000? Come on. I know they have huge import taxes. Here's Mike. Hello from Hungary of the VW diesel engines. Thank you. I don't know what the question is, but we have a Volkswagen uh, diesel, the uh, Porsche Cayenne diesel. How can you decide between hybrid and PHEV? Well, I think it comes down to budget, right? The thing about hybrids and why I'm a big fan of hybrids is that the barrier to entry is is lower. For And I use the best seller, which is the RAV4. So the RAV4 hybrid, I think is only $800 more than the gas model in America. And it's only $1,800 more here in Canada. So that jump to get into the hybrid is not very much, okay? So here's a perfect example. The RAV4 Hybrid in the Canadian market, I use Canadian dollars because I'm uh, more familiar with the product lineup here, is $33,000 for a RAV4 Hybrid. The base plug-in RAV4 Prime, the plug-in version, is $45,000, okay? So that is $12,000 more to get the plug-in version. If you can afford it and you can get one, uh, that's great. And you're also going to get a rebate, depending on where you live, off the plug-in version. But yeah, it comes down to what you can afford. And for me, I really believe we, we would be much better off as a society if more people who are just out shopping for a regular gas car got a hybrid. You're going to knock off 25 to 30% of your fuel bill. You're going to reduce emissions by that amount. And it doesn't cost that much more to get it. I think it's the way to go. But if you can afford a PHEV and you can get one, yeah, you're going to get you're going to average down your fuel costs even more. It comes down to do you live in an apartment? If you live in an apartment where you can't plug it in, well just get the hybrid. But if you live somewhere where you can just use a regular 120 volt wall outlet, then you can use a PHEV. You don't have to get the 240 volt system. That's fantastic. Anybody with a regular wall socket can My mother-in-law has a PHEV Tucson. They plug it in every night, every morning it's fully charged. All right, I think we had another super chat here. Hey, Zach, love your show. Thank you for that. Any plans on reviewing JLR's 2022 product lines? Uh, Velar, uh, the Sport, the F-Pace, it's been a while since they were reviewed. It's funny you mention that because I was emailing the new PR person from uh, Land Rover Jaguar Canada, and I've been emailing them regularly saying, when are we getting some new cars to drive? Um, and the reason why... I want to get a test unit from the manufacturer is I want to be able to say what I really think of the car. I could go down to the Land Rover dealer and get the cars, not a problem. But um, with Land Rover, you've got to really be able to speak your mind because there are known issues with these products and you have to, you have to tell people the, the straight up truth. You know, when we get a Porsche, as I mentioned from Lewis at uh, Porsche Center Vancouver, um, I don't really need to worry about saying anything negative about the car because we've owned three Cayennes. I know they're reliable. I have no problem suggesting somebody buy one. It's a good product. So getting a Porsche is easy. Getting a Range Rover or a Land Rover, well, you got to give people the unvarnished truth. I can do that when I get the press unit from the company. If I get it from a dealer, they're going to get all pissed because we talk crap about their car. It's not crap. It's just the reality. But they don't want to. They don't want to hear that. So, it's coming. Apparently, the units are being shipped. So we'll get them when we get them. But it's true. I mean, we're in a we're in a, a position where we've got to we've got to be able to tell you guys what we really think. 
And sometimes we do have to get cars from dealers just because um, they're not available. But often they're vehicles that are, they're fine, they're reliable. It's, it's not an issue. But, but, but Range Rover and Land Rover is in a, a whole different category of reliability. And the, re and the reliability category is down here. <clears throat> hey! Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We made it over 500 people for the first time ever on the live show. We're at 515 right now. 265 thumbs up. So thanks to you guys for being here. If you want to uh, give it a thumbs up, that would be great. So first time ever, we went over 5,000 in the live show. We do about 10,000 by the end of the week after the show has gone live, but that's great. I'm really, really happy, and I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. And, un you know, unfortunately, we can't get to every question. It's just impossible. But um, uh, it's much appreciated. So now we're up to 520. It's growing quickly. <clears throat> Well done. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. Oh, quickly on to hockey. I was hoping for good things from the Edmonton Oilers going against the Colorado, against Colorado, um, and I, I, we were dry. We were flying through Denver on the way back from Texas, and. Um, I didn't realize till after. Of course, we're in Denver. It's Colorado. They're playing in the against the Edmonton Oilers, and down the escalator comes this big guy with this bright orange uh, Connor McDavid sweater on. And I was like, I "said Hey, nice sweater." He, he just ignored me, but it didn't work. He, him going down to Denver didn't work. So it could all be over by uh, tomorrow night. Uh, but anyway, at least the, at least a Canadian team made it that far in the playoffs. We have Mark C with a super chat. And by the way, the super chats are just a way for me to see them. It's just easy for me to see them uh, so I can answer your question. If you just have to get something, that's the way to do it. Hey, Zach, do you think Jeep Wrangler 4xe is worth the cost? I've been hearing on some message boards that they have been issues with the charging system. Well, <clears throat> I wouldn't say that, um, that Jeep and Chrysler is in the same category as Land Rover Jaguar in reliability, they are better. And some of their brands have done exceptionally well over the last few years. The Dodge brand has gone way, way up in terms of quality. But whenever you're buying a first year of something, um, it can always be problematic. So the 4xe is new technology. It is new technology for this brand. Say if you had a, a plug-in hybrid from a, from a Toyota, well, they've been doing uh, hybrids and electrified vehicles for 20 years. It's all new, really, to Chrysler and Stellantis. So, yeah, taking a pass on the first year isn't a bad idea anyway, but I'm not up to speed on the individual complaints about that model. But um, in our review of it, I didn't really see for the cost of what they're charging for it, really any value there. If you live in an area where you're gonna get a rebate on it, maybe that might be worthwhile. But yeah, it's if you like the idea, and it's cool, like, I mean, it really is a cool product, and Wranglers, there's no real bad time to buy a Wrangler. They hold their value incredibly well, but you might wanna wait until the next model year and order one of those, and see if any of the, um, um, you know, the bugs have been worked out. Oh, just I just noticed here, huge haggis, is on now huge haggis finally caught the live chat in a while uh late congratulations on the 225,000 plus subs so uh, huge haggis has been a, a long time viewer of the live show and still one of my favorites when it comes to um handles so we have charlottetown spud um huge haggis which is just a great name my favorite is um dj pleasure seeking missile he's a local guy here in vancouver he hasn't been on in a little while but there you go Here's another super chat um, asking a question. I've talked about it twice already. Thoughts on the new Bolt pricing? It's tempting. Listen, I'm going to say it quickly again. General Motors has dropped the price. These are U.S. dollars by eleven thousand three hundred dollars in the last eighteen months on the price of the Bolt. And I'm here to tell you, I know they had fifteen fires. I just looked up before we went on the air here. Tesla in the last two or three years has had eighty-five fires in fact there was a model y i was i think it was a model y or model 3 looked the same here in vancouver that just burst like the whole thing went up 
and the guy almost didn't make it out of the car smashed the, his way out of the car through the window to get out so that thing just totally disintegrated i'm sure if you look it up look up um tesla fire vancouver it's a bright blue one uh, going up in flames so tesla gets a pass with 85 fires of their products general motors has 15 fires with the bolt and it's a front page story and you know they've paid to get them all fixed i'm a huge fan of the bolt as i mentioned earlier 250 miles of range um, for a car that's now what's the price 25,600 bucks that's cheap transportation Eric are you hearing anything about the chip shortage will finally clear up uh, well uh, Toyota did talk about it they did make a reference that they think by the third quarter of 2023 so that's a year and a quarter away is when they're hoping to see things change uh, other manufacturers have said the worst is behind us but it's going to be a slow march towards getting the chips back to where they need to be here's an interesting anecdote so toyota made an announcement because we went to the texas event for the first day of june in the month of may the average toyota dealer in the united states so through the month of may at the beginning of the month of may there were 6,000 Toyota cars on every single Toyota lot throughout the United States. So that's 50 states and only 6,000 cars. So for every single Toyota dealership they had in the United States, on the lot at the beginning of May, there was only 6,000 cars on the ground. At the end of the month, they still only had 6,000 cars on the ground, but they had, but they had sold... 176,000 cars. So that means that every single time a transport truck showed up, those cars and trucks rolled off the back and they rolled right into the hands of, of new owners. So the, the, the flow continues, it's just not able to replenish stocks. So they started with only 6,000 cars on dealer lots at the beginning of May, beginning of June, they still only had 6,000, but in the interim, they sold 176,000 cars. That's a hell of a lot of cars and trucks and SUVs or whatever they had. So there you go. It's, it's slowly, slowly going to get better. Uh, we got uh, one more super chat here before we go. Uh, Krunal, I don't see your question. Uh, here's your question. Hey, Zach, I'm about to buy my first car. Could you please suggest between a 2022 Jetta and a Civic? Listen, it, it depends on how long you're going to keep the car. Um, if you're if you're going to keep the car and keep it long term, just get a Civic. Don't get the 1.5 turbo. Don't get that one. Just get the regular two liter four cylinder. Great car. It's going to do everything you need. The Jetta is a nice car, too. But but the Civic has a, a, a better reliability rating overall. So yeah, listen, I always say to first time car buyers, and if you're new to buying cars and you want to keep your costs down and known costs for a car, you're going to buy a Civic or a Corolla. It's that simple. And they're going to do everything you need. It's not fancy, but they're good basic transportation. Okay, we are uh, over, over time now. Thanks to everybody that tuned in. I don't read, obviously, every question on the air, but I do after the fact. So thanks to everybody for being here. I really appreciate it. We made it for the first time over 500 views in the live show. That's very much appreciated. And uh, we, I'm just thinking, we're going to be back. We're going to Toronto and Kingston Tuesday, back Friday. We'll be here for the live show on Sunday. And then we're home for a couple of weeks. We do have a, an event we're going to back east at the end of June. But uh, lots going on. Thanks to everybody that tuned in. We'll chat with you next time. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.